So uh, my name is Kyle Burns. I'm a research technician for the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbital Camera Science Operations Center. Uh, I've been leading into the uh, NAC-DM efforts uh, at ASU. Uh, there are several other teams that are producing NAC-DMs as well, but uh, I'm talking about the methods that we use to produce our DMs, even though they are similar to the uh, other methods that other teams use. Okay, so here we've got the uh, NAC camera, which is uh, very similar to it's, uh, what Ernest was just talking about. Um, it is a linear push room camera. Uh, here's a better view of it on the uh, spacecraft. There you can see the, the NACs oriented on the, uh, the spacecraft. Uh, and each uh, camera was designed to have about a half meter pixel resolution. Um, two, two and a half kilometers across track and 25 kilometers swap down track. Uh, so it's high resolution, low coverage. Uh, this here is a diagram of how we uh, acquire the CR images. Usually we acquire them over two separate orbits. Uh, usually we like to have these on two consecutive orbits. This usually preserves the light geometry, or the, uh, the lighting. Um, uh, usually we get a, a slew angle between 10 and 30, 30 degrees, with the convergence angle between the two images of uh, 10 and 45 degrees. Usually the larger the convergence angle, the better result we'll get. Uh, Sweeping on the spacecraft operator does interfere with uh, a lot of the other spacecraft operations, so we're limited to about four slews every 24 hours, and that's not just for uh, stereo images, so we have to make our uh, images count when we have them. Um, and also, we can pitch the spacecraft forward so that we can uh, acquire stereo images near the poles. Uh, so first when we get the images, they uh, don't match up very well with each other, so we have to perform a bundle adjustment. Um, we do this, uh, first we import the images into uh, socket set using uh, ISIS routines. Um, they attach, uh, they perform a radio, radio metric correction and import a list of keywords with relevant parameters uh, regarding spacecraft cameras. Uh, those images are then imported into uh, socket set using a general push room uh, sensor model. And then we uh, perform a bundle adjustment uh, by picking the tie points between the images and uh, using the multi sensor triangular, uh, triangulation algorithm in socket set. Uh, because these images don't have the uh, necessary absolute. Uh, uh, absolute accuracy that we would uh, require for an FDM. Uh, we use Lola data to uh, provide a better absolute reference frame for these DEMs. Uh, Lola data has a, uh, uh, can provide ranging measurements uh, up to plus or minus 0.1 meters, but there's uh, uncertainties in the space of positioning that can result in uh, offsets as large as plus or minus 15 meters. Um, so what we do is we uh, uh, take a sample of the DEM and try to register it as closely as possible to the Lola data, uh, usually resulting in an RMS offset of about less than a meter. Um, and we use this using a uh, generalized pattern search uh, in MATLAB. And then we take this data, and we import it back into the socket set, and uh, usually we come with a model that, that aligns fairly close with the Lola data. Uh, so once we get a good stereo model, uh, we can extract the DEMs uh, using socket that's next generation alter terrain extraction, um, otherwise known as N-gate. Uh, this just performs an image correlation if matching for every pixel in the image. It creates a very, very dense model, uh, and then we resample it to uh, whatever ground sampling distance that we would like. Uh, usually we choose for at least uh, three times the ground sampling distance of the image that was, that was, that was just required of the EM. Um, so in the nominal phase of the mission, we would get a half meter pixel image. Uh, you could sample it at one and a half uh, meters per pixel, but we decided to usually go about two meters per pixel, just to reduce noise. Um, as long as everything was uh, fine during image acquisition, uh, as long as lighting conditions are preserved, uh, low or er, uh, nominal incidence angles, uh, usually we get a pretty good DEM that comes out that requires very little efforts as far as uh, editing it. But uh, there can be problems with uh, low incidence angles uh, result in a very noisy DEM, and uh, high incidence angles will uh, create shadows that we can't, don't have any information so we can't get a DEM out of that. 
So once we uh, finish this DEM generation, get these uh, beautiful products like this, this is uh, the Timber Crater. And uh, the whole entire thing was, uh, the whole entire site was done in two, in a, two meters uh, pixel. And it's actually about 13 stereo pairs across. Uh, or actually not 13 stereo pairs across, but uh, about 10, 10 stereo pairs across. So I believe it's about 30, 30 kilometers across. Yeah, I think it's a little bit more than that. Anyways, uh, so there you can see in the little blown up portion that uh, kind of gives you an idea of the resolution capabilities that we are, uh, that these DEMs have. Uh, you can see the top, that's just the blown up portion of the color shade of the leaf. Below that we have the, uh, the slope map, and then uh, below that we have the ortho uh, rectified image, the ortho photo. Uh, the ortho photo being just an image that has uh, all distortions due to camera, obliquity, and terrain relief removed. Uh, another thing we also produce with these is uh, a confidence map. It basically just shows you uh, what the confidence we have in each pixel would be, whether it was an interpolated pixel or whether it was a uh, kind of suspect value. So in order for first to do uh, error analysis, we rely on two, uh, two aspects of the DEM. Uh, it's relative and absolute accuracy. Um, it's absolute accuracy, we just measure it uh, just against the lower data of the area. Um, usually we just provide the, the RMS offset um, between the Lola tracks and the NAC DEM. Um, and then there is also a, uh, the uh, relative accuracy of the DEM, just how much, how well the bundle adjustment was performed. Um, and this is usually some, uh, a value provided straight from the socket set. Uh, so one thing that we've been trying to work with is uh, jitter in the spacecraft. Uh, these DEMs are very, very sensitive to perturbations in the, uh, the, the pointing of the camera. So any offsets in that that's not accounted for when we uh, pre-process these images uh, results in these, uh, these washboard effects. And they become really, really obvious as you get more and more jitter. Uh, this jitter was first, some jitter was first noticed uh, in the commissioning phase when we had, uh, we were still deploying the high gain antenna and solar array at one hertz and three hertz respectively. And uh, now we've gone into, uh, we had a reactional failure uh, a couple months ago, and now that we brought that reaction back online, we're noticing something along the lines of 43 hertz jitter. So this is the 43 hertz jitter right here. And you can see it's very prominent and dominates the image. and. Uh, so it really uh, ruins a lot of the, uh, the data we're receiving. So we're trying to figure out a good uh, method of possibly removing this, or just uh, removing these images as possible stereo candidates. Um, we've also, now that we've gone back and looked for this uh, 43 hertz jitter, we keep finding more and more that was uh, not very obvious in the uh, earlier uh, stage of the mission, but uh, now we're kind of going back and, and realizing that there are some problems that we need to be resolved in the future. The other thing we're working on right now is a stereo catalog of all the uh, NAC stereo pairs that have been acquired. Uh, all of this is just providing a contact map. Uh, it gives you some information about the, uh, the lighting conditions, uh, instant angle, emission angle. It uh, gives you the, in the, uh, the images that were used, and then it kind of gives you uh, an idea of the coverage. Uh, sometimes there's not as much coverage in every stereo pair. So. This is a very useful tool for uh, for NACD in production. Uh, it's currently not uh, released yet, but we hope to uh, release it in the future. So, so far, ASU has released a total of 79 individual NAC stereo pairs. Um, we have processed somewhere around 120, 130 uh, DMs right now. Um, DMs can be found uh, at this website right here. Um, what Ernest had it before. Um, we plan to uh, continue to release these uh, NAC DEMs throughout the year quarterly with the, uh, uh, the LROC PDS releases. And uh, currently we only have about 1% stereo coverage of the lunar surface, and that doesn't include that it's all stereo coverage. That's not even just the, uh, the images that were good enough to make a, a NAC DEM out of it. And so uh, 
you know, I, I spent long hours making these DEMs, like that one with Liftenberg created, and take take a couple months at a time. I think we have this awesome, amazing data set, and uh, it turns out we've only covered about 0.6% uh, of the surface. So we still have a lot of work to go, a lot of uh, pairs to uh, process. Um, so just to give you guys a couple of examples of what people are doing with these uh, NAC DEMs is, uh, here's uh, one by Mahante et al. in 2011-2012. Uh, uh, he's actually got a poster here, I believe on Thursday. And uh, so I won't go into it too deeply, but he uh, created a mesh uh, pattern for the crater. Uh, it was in the Highland Ponds region, and people were trying to find the, uh, the bottoms of these melt ponds. And he created a, a mesh pattern for the uh, crater, it was able to remove the deponded material, simulate what it would look like on the inside of that crater if there was no melting material, and then from there calculate the, uh, the volume of the, the melting material. And then there was another uh, paper done by James Ashley, uh, where he used NACDEX to identify a bunch of small scale deformations in the obtuse email pond north of the crater. Uh, another great application for these is uh, landing site selection and traverse planning for any future mission. Um, these would be a valuable tool for any uh, future mission to the lunar, lunar surface as long as there's a NACDEM there. Uh, you won't be limited by. Uh, or at least you won't be limited as much by engineering criteria. You can uh, go straight for the science and uh, accomplish anything that you uh, shoot for. Um, so this is a movie. This is kind of the final thing. The oh, this right. Okay. So this is one of the fun things that uh, one of the coolest products that we can generate with these NAC DEMs is by. Uh, draping the image over the top of it, create these fine perspective images and flyovers, and uh, those are really cool. This one's available on YouTube. Um, it's just a Linnea Crater, just a flyover of the Linnea Crater. But uh, it's like it doesn't want to work. So, other than that, thank you. Okay, we have a few minutes for questions.